We want to take the, the art of robbery to the next level. Yeah. No, we don't want to be like your normal white arm robber. Whoever came up with that plan, they're smart. All the blood come on the stairs, but it, it was like jelly. That's crazy. It was a mastermind behind one of the biggest robberies in England. Five million pounds worth of motherboards and 100 million pounds worth of data. We went as a fast response robbery team. Police uniforms, police fans, police cars. And I'm here today to answer any of your questions. Dressed up as yeah. police officers, police vehicles. How is that even done? There's no way you could get away with that. Well, man, I think no that's so GTA. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's GTA. GTA yeah. real now. Some video game. GTA London. Best of luck, yeah? Thank you. No yeah, pressure. I'm going to need it. Everyone makes money legally or illegally. What made you decide that, yeah, this was the right thing to do rather than just getting an actual job? My mum was a professional shoplifter. Uh, my dad was an armed robber. And everybody I knew was into crime. So it was normal. I was surrounded by people that earned their money by, by doing criminality. Uh, what's a professional shoplifter? No, but it runs in the jeans, bro. It runs in the jeans. <laughs> and I looked upon it as a job, but we were professional criminals. Whatever we did, we, we gave it 120%. You know, we went at it. You know, we were, we were highly motivated, very professional. We weren't just running into places, brandishing guns and hitting open. We planned jobs for weeks and weeks and weeks. I could do that though, like that work. No, you couldn't, could no, go. no. You would not want that lifestyle. We wanted to take the, the art of robbery to the next level. Yeah. You know, we didn't want to be like your normal oik uh, armed robber. We got approached by, by an underworld uh, contact. Horizon was, was a, one of the biggest data protection uh, facilities in England. Uh, it holds uh, banking data from JP Morgan. When I looked at it the first time, it was impossible. Um, I met lots of people in the underworld that had looked at it and had been offered the job uh, and all turned it down because they had 10 security guards, they had an independent security company, and they had 24 hour patrols there and they had three police stations within the vicinity. And anyone that would take it on had to be completely f***ing mad. Um, and, I, and, I, and I saw a move. We didn't want to take any guns. So we just wanted to use our intellect. So if you didn't have guns and stuff like that, so how did you? So we, we went in as, as a fast response robbery squad, yeah. all in police uniforms, police van, a car and a dog. I think we was in there for one hour. I can't know, whoever came up with that plan, they're smart. No, it's mate. <laughs> <laughs> He's giving away the plan for the younger, for the younger yeah, lots. I need to go get a note. I need to get pen and paper, bro. On my life. When I was in school, I was a bit of a silly guy. So I used to be in isolation all the time for just trolling my teachers and stuff. Was you ever in isolation? You know, I never went, uh, I, got, I got expelled. I got expelled uh, in, in junior school. In junior, junior school? school? <laughs> Bro was stealing everyone's milk. Yeah, <laughs> literally. Uh, a kid attacked me. I picked up a pen case, uh, it was metal, and I stabbed him with it. And then they put me into a home. It was for the worst kids in London. And the, the first minute I got there, I knew I landed in hell. I was one of the youngest kids to go into this place, 11 years old. I thought I could look after myself and as soon as I got in there some kid just walked up to me, three of them, one of them punched me straight in the face. For no reason? Yeah, and there was two other kids that come with me. Uh, one of them got pissed on that night. But that's the sad part and that's the problem because they just send them off to these places from such a young age but everyone else is a criminal. Yeah, I had a similar story. My first week of year six, I was winding up some guy, winding him up, winding up and then he went to the bin, sharpened a pen and then stabbed me. I think I got the mark. It's a little mark in it, but... Do you know what? I've done the same thing. I've got 150 stitches in now, 120 on the inside, and the rest on the outside. Uh... And that was stopping someone from putting a machete over my head. In your head? Yeah. And he actually hit me on top of the head. Whose mark do you think's bigger? Yours, of course. Yeah. Twins. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, we've lived the same shank lifestyle. <laughs> like. Let's say I'm on Belmarsh with you, on the same wing. Do you think I'd last because I'm my Joe Bunch? It depends on who, who you are joking with. If you start joking about something and you, don't, you can't read the situation, you're going to get weighed in. What do you think, left or right? I would go straight down the middle. Then maybe you wouldn't be such a cock <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah! <laughs> God, that's scaring me right now. All joking aside, prison is very volatile. That's what's crazy. That's what scares me about mm. prison. By what age did you start going to prison? I think I, I, I mean, my, my first uh, prison sentence, I was 17. Okay, was you scared when you went to prison or was you feeling like the man? I can always remember sitting outside Penneville the first time I ever went there. And I was sitting in the sweat box, it was pissing down the rain, it was cold. I had butterflies in my stomach and I could hear people shouting out the windows and I could, I could see screws walking past, the, the jingling of keys. 
Yeah, I was scared of that. It's like when you come in, you're, you're at the bottom, like everyone's here experiencing Joe and you're just the, the little guy. So when you're in prison, you have to be that guy. You can't look scared. So how was you? Was there any bravado in there or was he just that guy? It's, it's, it's the survival of the fittest in prison. You have to look the part, you have to act the part. You see lots of things. I can remember coming out of my cell one day and some geezer cut his balls off and threw it in the screw. Whoa! Whoa! He just said that with a straight face as well, as if it's like a normal thing. He's like, yeah, I've seen a bloke just cut off his balls. Like, no biggie, that's just what happens, you know? <laughs> that's the norm. You know? There's a lot of really mad people. And, you know, they turn on the sixpence. You could be in a queue, and then one of them will walk up behind you and stab you in the eye. I, I saw one, one screw get his throat cut, and as I looked on the floor, I see all the blood come on the stairs, but it, it was like jelly, and he cut him good. Oh. See what I mean? Like, like he's saying that so normally, yeah. Like he got shanked in his eyes. <laughs> yeah, his leg, <laughs> it's casual. Left ball it's sack. Normal. Day normal. And the screams are, that, you know, you go to bed at night, you you think about them. Wow. Yeah. You called yourself a mastermind, but how did you get caught? You know? Unfortunately, a friend of mine used the same mo with a police uniform. A few months later, he and someone else got arrested on the job. They then showed my picture to a load of security guards and they said, that's a, that's a guy that done Verizon. And then all of a sudden I had 50 police forces from around, around England coming to visit me. Is that not scary? Like any time you can get caught? Yeah, that's the black and getting swatted. I'll it's be paranoid bro. Yeah. I was actually in my girlfriend's flat. I looked over the balcony and uh, I saw a woman walk past and a guy and they just didn't look right. I had a rucksack on the table. I ran through the flat, like, grabbed all the thing, pulled myself onto the roof. I went all the way along, jumped down the other end, and as I came out of the block, uh, right down the other end, about 20 old people were going into, my, into the flat. And that was the first time I realised that they were onto me. He just jumped over the balcony, light. I was doing Assassin's Creed. <laughs> Normal, innit? So I was on the run for a year, and I was just about to fly to Thailand. Mm. I, I'd arranged to pick up a passport. Next thing I knew, I was walking along, a police car mounted the pavement, come flying towards me. I threw my phone over the wall and as I turned around another one came there and then a van came and the next thing I was, I was spread eagled on the floor and that was it but it was, it was actually quite a relief. Oh his life is a movie. Do you feel that you are never going to touch you know crime ever again? I actually spent two and a half years in a therapeutic prison. I learned a lot about myself and I came to understand myself so I stopped drinking, stopped smoking, stopped taking drugs so I became less angry. I became a born again Christian and I made a deal with God. Uh, come to me and let me do the rest. Right. And, and since that day, I, I've come out and, and, and I've turned my life around. How much do you think religion plays a role in a big reform? Role. A, big a big role, role because like you follow Violet. guidelines, innit? Yeah. yeah. So like it set rules. It teaches you in the way okay. that you should go. I left prison with a tent. But I was pretty lucky because I had a good support network. But, you know, there was lots of temptation. People offered me kilos of cocaine, mm. kilos of uh, puff, kilos of weed. Uh, they offered me uh, lots of jobs to go back into the into the game I was in. Indeed.com, yeah. Bro, get back in the game. Like he's going back to football or something. <laughs> LinkedIn, can I get <laughs> sell some crack, please? <laughs> but I promised my kids that I would I would lead a different life, and luckily for me, I did. You know, I, the skills that I had were very transferable. I wasn't a lazy criminal. I, I used to work from five o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. That's crazy, that's honestly it's, crazy, it's, yeah. I've used that ethos to come out and do a straight business. I started up a food company with my daughter and her boyfriend. I put the same amount of energy into the straight business now and what I did into criminality. We are more than our past and if we put the same amount of energy into honest work, we can change our lives. Imagine Criminal MasterChef. I want to watch that. Jail Cooks, that's a TV that. show right there. Do you ever have any regret about the choices you made? Being a professional criminal, uh, you go to work and you don't feel no empathy. But as I've got, as I've got older, I, I sort of look at what I did as, as, as abnormal. You know, I can't believe that I was actually going around terrorising people and doing what I did. Do I have any regrets? Oh, massive. Um, what started out as something really good turned out to be one of the worst mistakes of my life and one of the shittest environments I could ever walk into. And 15 years in prison is a testament to a lifestyle that I should never have gone down. No, I got respect for him, you know. Yeah. Even I after, feel like before, after, I was being a dickhead. Before. Even after he called you that, he called me what? <laughs> yeah, I did roast him in it. It's, it's love, innit? <laughs> <laughs>